All right. Don Carter got Obi in his motherfucker. Now, he's been sitting here for 24 hours, but he ain't arrested. Now, let me tell you something. If you ain't under arrest, don't even sit in here. Don't even bother. So they got Obi in here jammed up. Don Carter's been, you know what I'm saying, sprinkling these breadcrumbs, trying to find any pigeon, stool pigeon, that will take the bait and tail. You know what I mean? Take the bait and tail. But Obi's sitting in here, and right now he's cool, calm, and collected. Most people are when you see him in an interrogation room. There's only one, two things that you're going to see in there. You got the cool guy, like me, that's sitting in there, like, man, how the fuck am I going to get out of this motherfucker? And then you got the, the you got the guy that's about to get in there and do some talking. Now, I've only been in an investigative room maybe twice in my life. Both times were only for incidents that I had, never for nobody else. So it wasn't no one for, you know, saying there wasn't no reason for me to get in there and do any talking. There's never any reason. But OB in here sitting here. Don's out there. This has been 24 hours. He's just been sitting in here, sitting in here, sitting in here. Nothing's happening. They outside. They chit-chatting. The police go home. The police come back. The police go to lunch. The police come back. The police got meetings. The police is taking breaks. Police got cigarette breaks. They got coffee. They got everything going on. They out there laughing. Ha ha. All you hear behind the door is, oh, yeah, man, it's your fun as fuck. Ha ha. Yeah. You in there, you sitting there, you trying to figure out what the hell they know. One, you know, you in a big ass drug organization. You got Noma. You got the Tejada knockoffs. You got Tariq and Bray. There's a lot of bullshit that's been going on. Not including the international shit, but we're going to bring that up on a different scale. So Obi's in here and he's just sitting. Now, a lot of us are thinking, all right, Obi is solid. But when Don Carter comes in, this is when Don Carter's like, listen to me. We got a lot of information. If you know anything about the police, they are allowed to lie. We also find out a lot about Don Carter, that Don Carter has jurisdiction across the whole city of New York. Most cops only got their little borough. You know, you got your precincts. Don Carter can move freely around everywhere. Now we get some information about the green card. Hey, Obi, uh, you 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 got green cards, right? I got the green cards the way that you're supposed to. No, 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 to die. There, there's a guy by the name of Councilman Tate. Councilman Tate, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know who that is. Hmm. To have high-powered friends like that, Obi, you might be doing some stuff. And uh, what do you know about a Tariq St. Patrick? Who? Tariq St. Patrick. I know there's a connection between the two. I have no idea who you're talking about. I registered for my green cards anyway that anyone else would. So, <laughs> interesting. But to know a councilman, well, to know a councilman, it would be a good time for me to know a councilman. Now, wouldn't it, Don Carter? And listen, you're going to stop talking to me like that. Like, you know me. I'm just saying, officer. I'm just saying that I got my green card the legitimate way. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to do a little bit of digging. And we got a file with pictures of you and Tariq St. Patrick. Tariq? I don't know a Tariq. Oh, uh, well, this case file right here says you do. This case file right here says that you two, you two, know this man right here. Can I talk to a lawyer? Yeah, you can talk to a lawyer. You're not under arrest. So Obi, he's sweating right now. You know, you put the suit on. The first thing that get hot when you put a suit on is around the neck. You got to loosen that tie up a little bit. You in the interrogation. It's been 24 hours. I hate wearing ties in general. You know, I got to loosen the tie up anyway. He in here. I don't know who you're talking about. Oh, nigga, you know what I'm talking about. And Don Carter puts on the front. Don Carter puts on the front. He's making it seem like Don Carter's making it seem like he me. You know what I mean? Y'all know what I mean by that? Put a one in the chat if y'all know what I mean about Don Carter acting like he's me. Put a one in the chat if you think you know what I'm talking about. If you think Don Carter is me, you know what I mean? Because Obi's in there, Obi holding it down. I don't know a councilman. Like, nigga, you know a councilman, nigga. Rashad Tate, he expedited these green cards. Me and my brother got it the legitimate way. Okay, yeah. You, you got it the legitimate way, all right. I, I know you didn't get it the legitimate way. You know why I know you didn't get it the legitimate way? My name is Don Carter. We got the photos right here.
We're placing you up under Tariq St. Patrick. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me talk to a lawyer. No, 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 no. Ain't no talking to a lawyer. You know why? Get in here. We keep the paperwork on us. Don Carter got the case file, and he got photos of Tariq and Obi. So now the pressure is on Obi because the motherfucking paperwork is out there. So Obi's like, let me talk to a lawyer. But it turns out Don Carter, he's no different than me showing up to school with no homework. <laughs> Don Carter had fake pieces of paper. He's just trying to apply that pressure. Obi was about to fold. Obi was about to fold. Everyone talking about Obi was going to hold it down. No, that case file came out. He thought there was pictures of him and Tariq in there. That nigga said, let me talk to a lawyer. Right when a nigga get to talking to a lawyer, that's like, that's your right to talk to a lawyer. But most of the time, if a nigga like, let me get a lawyer, the nigga guilty. Man, Obi was about to talk. He thought there was actual, what did that nigga say? Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Let me get a lawyer. Let me, that nigga's voice went from, I don't know a councilman to, can, can I talk to a lawyer? So I got to talk to a lawyer. <laughs> when you start bringing out paperwork, let me let me go talk to a lawyer. Yeah, y'all didn't peep that. As soon as he seen that there may have been some photos of him, that nigga said, let me talk to Tariq. I mean, let me talk to a lawyer. <laughs> that nigga Obi was spooked. Fuck that. I don't know what y'all was watching. That nigga Obi said, oh, can I talk to a lawyer? That nigga loosened up. That nigga loosened the tie up. Talk about... I mean, I'll talk to a lawyer. <laughs> nah, he didn't fold. He didn't fold. What I'm saying is when that paperwork came out, that nigga got spooked. Look at look at his whole demeanor. Before that, what was he doing? This is this is Obi before the paperwork is set down. I don't know what you're talking about. I did it the legitimate way. Tariq, who was Tariq? I don't know what Tariq. It went from that to can I talk to a lawyer? If you were standing on business, you should have asked for a lawyer at the beginning. Obi thought he was going to be able to talk his way through this until Don Carter said, no, nah, nigga, I got pictures, nigga. That nigga said, well, that nigga lost that goddamn <laughs> British accent. That nigga started speaking English. That nigga said, may I please uh, contact a lawyer? He went from, I don't know what you're talking about to, can I contact a lawyer? Can I use my one call? I'm not under arrest or nothing, am I? Oh, okay. let me let me go talk to my lawyer. <laughs> that nigga thought they had footage of him and Tariq nigga. that nigga was spooked fuck that I don't blame him though but you supposed to ask for a lawyer at the beginning alright so from there So from there, he contacted his brother. He tried to call the house. He was like, hey, bro, what you doing? The brother just said, when he was saying he was trying to bring his family over, I was thinking it was going to be like his wife and kids or something. Man, this nigga brought his brother over who looks like he might be interested in Drew. <laughs> I was looking at this. I was like, man, Drew and Obi's brother, they like, they the same person, just one darker than the other. So he get on the phone. He calling his brother. His brother don't know what the hell going on in New York City. And then Drew is there. Now, the only reason Drew is here is because uh, Noma was like, hey, Drew, go to the apartment and find out what the fuck uh, Obi and them got going on. You know what I mean? Nah, he didn't look at the photos because, listen, if you look at the photos... You gonna get a reaction if you would have looked in there. Think about it. If you in the interrogation room, you in the interrogation room, and they say they got photo evidence of you, and you look at the photos, and you look like, oh shit, they they got a picture of me and Tariq talking about, you know, what I'm saying like in the warehouse. You know what I mean? Just think how your reaction would be like. Oh nigga, they do got photo evidence. God damn, nigga, who took this photo? You looking at the photo, like trying to get the angle, like man, that was security guard number two that took this. Oh, I knew I should have. Mm, I knew I should have lied that nigga. Mm, it's season two, I knew it. But now he's talking about, hey, Drew, what are you doing at my house? He said, no, 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 nigga, what are you doing at the precinct, nigga? Hey, man, I ain't talking about nothing. Can you come and get me? She was like, all right, bet. And then the brother. 
the brother doing all this talking. Hey, thank you for the green cards. Shut the fuck up, nigga. First of all, the brother don't know who these employees are. He talk about, hey, Obi, someone from your from your work came over here. Said, who? Put him on the phone, and it's Drew, nigga. If I'm, I'm telling y'all like this. When I was staying at my brother's house before I moved over here, well, my brother ain't working. He retired too. So if one of his coworkers would have came over, like if my brother was in the dope game and someone showed up to my house talking about, hey, I work with your brother. I'm not letting you in the house, nigga. I don't know you until I can get confirmation from my brother. I'm not letting you in the house, let alone letting you talk on the house phone. <laughs> You let this nigga, hey, you got a co-worker over here. Who is it? Some guy by the name of Drew. Oh, hell no. Tell that nigga to get, go get the gun, go get the knife or something. Let that nigga out. But anyway, Drew calls up Davis. And Davis is like, well, he can't practice law, so he sends Pearly over there. Now, Pearly is the assistant that's going to be representing Davis. She was about to represent the white guy, but he was like, she ain't got enough work. She ain't got the credentials to represent him. So the reason that Davis is doing this is because he needs to get someone on the clock so he can start generating some money. He's back against the wall also. So Drew ends up going up there, but he can't get OB out. So he's like, all right, we're going to send Pearly up there. Pearly goes up there. And it's the same thing. Y'all remember this happened when Davis went to go get Zeke out of jail? You violated his rights. It's just a circle of life. It's a righteous, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a passage. You know what I mean? It, you, got, you got to go to jail for a little bit. In order to say that you are a real power character, you have to sit in jail for at least an episode. If you don't go to jail at least one time in the power universe, then that means you are not immune to taking a bullet. Think about all the characters that never went to jail. A lot of them get knocked quick. Now, if you go to jail, it's like building up your immune system. It's like catching C-19 one time. It's like, okay, you got a better chance of survival the next time you get it. So if you don't go to jail, then it's going to be tough for you. But it's a catch-22 because if you do go to jail, nine times out of ten, they're going to assume that you was in there talking, you in there snitching, and that's what's unfortunately about to happen to Obi. But no one knows what really was going on here, but they actually get him up out of here. Now, when they get out of here, Drew is doing what Drew do. He trying to power up. Drew trying to make his way up the ranks, but this ain't Drew's story, so we can only tell it from Obi's perspective. Obi's like, man, all right, I'm, I'm glad that Drew came and got me out of here instead of Kane, because Kane would be, like, sniffing around for shit. Drew ain't really going to do too much. Drew's just talking about, hey, listen, I don't want to be a corner boy. I want to work my way up to manager and rob them hoes, but that's a whole nother story. Listen. I want to I want to be higher up on the food chain. So Obi's like, all right, listen, we don't need to tell Noma about this. He's like, no, nah, why would we tell Noma? Because I didn't tell Don anything. They think I run the organization, Tariq. Not Tariq. Damn it. What's your name again? Drew. She thinks they think that I run the organization, Drew. But I will give you more work. My word, scout honor. So Obi makes a promise with Drew. You don't say shit to Noma, let me play this how I play it, and we're going to get up out of here. You know what I mean? So it's like... <laughs> but at this point, what we just say about being locked up, you get a little bit of immunity, you know what I mean? But did people think you doing a little bit of talking and they can't really trust you, man? That goes for everybody. Everyone that goes to jail, we looking at them a little differently. Tariq went to jail. Somehow Ghost was reading the letter to him. Talking about, I knew you being here. Ghost went to jail. They were on his ass trying to eliminate him. Kane was in there. Well, Kane was whooping ass when he was in jail. Tasha was in jail. We didn't know. It. Well, Tasha was taking a stand and snitching. Uh, Tommy was in there. Tommy wasn't really in there long. He had a suit on. He wasn't really in there long. Braden, 
Braden wasn't really held like that because, you know, he's a little white boy. He ain't really been in there. Effie was in there. We didn't know if Effie was talking. Is Hey, going to jail in the power? Is, 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 is. Going to jail in power is like, like kindergarten graduation. Everyone's got to do it. You know what I mean? I wish I would go to my kids' kindergarten graduation. They like, Mo, you going to your child's graduation? I'm like, oh, my kids graduate high school? No, your kids graduating kindergarten. Kindergarten? This graduation for kindergarten? Man, hell no, I ain't going to no graduation for no kindergartners. They gonna be in there taking naps. They ain't gonna know what the hell's going on. Everybody gets to graduate kindergarten. I don't even think you can fail kindergarten. If you fail kindergarten, we got to look at the parents. You know what I mean? Failing kindergarten is not the child's fault. Failing kindergarten is solely directed and connected to the parent. <laughs> the parent needs to be suspended from work for a week if they kid. Like, when you, you line the kids up, graduation day. Oh, wait a minute, Mo. Your kid don't graduate. What do you mean my kid don't graduate? They only go to school for half a day. You drop your kid off at 8 o'clock. Them little motherfuckers is out by 11.30. Nap time is at 11. Then we got snack time at 11.15. Then it's time to leave at 11.30. What you mean my kid didn't graduate? Well, we look at you coming in here. You smelling like dank every day. You smelling like yak every day. Your kid didn't graduate. So what we're going to do is route this up to your employer, and you're going to be suspended for a week. Like, what? You can't do that. You can't do that. But this is what's going on with Obi. He's like, all right, listen. Don't tell no more about this. I'll handle it, okay? Don thinks that I run the enterprise. Jew's like, <laughs> okay. Now, Zeke, nah, Zeke, I don't, Zeke was like eight years old in kindergarten. Zeke is a different animal. I mean, hey, we gonna talk about Zeke. Zeke is a different animal. See, Zeke was solely... You proved my case. Who said that, Zeke? Listen, you just proved my case, and you proved my point. Zeke failed kindergarten. Why did Zeke fail kindergarten? What did I just say? What is the reason for a kid failing kindergarten? It's not the kid. What is the reason for a kid failing kindergarten? What did I, what did I just say? I'm going to show you the main reason why This is why Zeke failed kindergarten. I know we're a little off subject, but this is why Zeke failed kindergarten. The parent. Kids only fail kindergarten because of the parent, not because of the kid, because of the parent. Look what Monet, look at this. This ain't your regular dime bag right here. This mother, she looking at Drew like, nigga, did you put, the, 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 nigga, the, Drew put a whole OZ in this bag. This bag ain't supposed to be this fool. This nigga Drew was packing shit up back then. No diddy. She looking at Drew side eye like Drew. This is a half a pound in this little motherfucker. That nigga Drew been stacking dope up since 92. She looking at Drew like, nigga, that's a whole brick, nigga. Drew talking about, Ma, I just want to serve the customers. Now we see Drew as an adult telling Obi, I want to move up. We didn't know that Drew had a youngin' was doing this shit. He was really pushing P. He put a whole pound in a tin. What the fuck? But let's get back to OB's story. I'm telling y'all, hey, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. All I can do is connect the dots to you. I don't make none of this up. I didn't write this shit. All I can tell y'all is what I saw on the screen, and I'm going to make it make sense. Some way, somehow, we're going to make that puzzle piece fit. <laughs> <laughs> okay Drew don't tell Noma I run the organization and I'll handle all of this so Drew's like <laughs> okay so now listen remember I told you guys if you're going to lie, lie. Never, hear me out. Never be afraid to lie. 
Never be afraid to lie. Lying is human nature, okay? Lying is a part of the human, um, how can I say it? The human life cycle is built off of lies. You know what I mean? Never be afraid to lie. But if you're going to lie, have a lie prepared. And never tell a lie that's too complex that you might forget it. Always tell a lie that you can deviate from that lie, but stay on the same course. Now, Obi, he's already fucked up. And the reason he's fucked up is because the information about the green cards had got let loose. Episode two. Noma, when she was looking up Don Carter, she's like, hey, you got those green cards? He's like, yeah, we we, we got the green cards. So at this point, you got to come up with a, a scenario. Yeah, we got the green cards, but you got to you got to always have something legitimate to back it up. So you can tell a lie as long as you got a little bit of truth attached to it. Yeah, I got the you know, what I'm saying ice was giving us a hard time. But yeah, we got the green cards. You don't ever want to make shit seem too simple. When you go to work, when you go to work and they ask you how you did something, hey, so what do you guys do all day? You never make it seem simple because that means you got time to do other shit. You always make a task seem harder than what it is. They say, Mo, when you do your lives, what you got to do? Right now, I ain't going to lie to you. I'm in sweatpants. I got Crocs on. I'm about to go get some yak when we get to this hour mark. We about to pull up. We got four more hours ahead of us, maybe three. We don't know because I ain't trying to get too drunk and then wake up drunk. But that, that's neither here nor there because I probably can stay up the rest of the day. But then that means I can't drive because I've been drinking. But listen. You got to tell them it's complex. Yeah, right now I got two screens up. Right now I'm over here taking notes. You got to make it seem like it's more than it is. Because then they be like, hey, well, Mo, when you get free, can you uh show me how to do this? I'm like, ah, I ain't got that kind of time because, you know, I got to do this and do this. So Obi's already fucked up because he got the green cards and he went behind Noma's back. He didn't think any of this was going to happen because he thought that they were going to get away from Noma. So now Noma's, oh, Bean, where were you at? Oh, Ice had me. She said for 24 hours. Uh yeah, you know, they ICE is always fucking. They're threatening deportation. Me, my brother, everyone, the whole organization. No, Noma, don't worry about it. It's all good. Drew came and got me out. Everything is all right. Now, we're thinking Drew is trustworthy. We can never trust a Tahada. There's never been a point where we looked at a Tahada and said, hey, that T in Tahada stands for trustworthy. No. The T in Tahada is <laughs> turn around, run away, never trust a Tahada. So Obi in here and he think it's shit sweet. Yeah, man. In his mind, he's like, yeah, man, me and me and Drew, baby. Yeah, to the top, baby. Yeah. Woo! Then out of nowhere, you turn around, you hear Drew talking. Oh, nah, let me let me say something. Um, oh well, Noma. Actually, I got this nigga from the precinct. Obi turned around and said, what are you doing? Yeah, me and Kane, we ain't had nothing to do with that. Did you, Kane? Kane sitting there like, nah. We got him from the precinct. He was talking to Don Carter. He been told everything. Obi like, nah, nah, that, that ain't true. You already just sliced me up one time. So he's sitting here and Noma's looking at us and we looking at her and she looking at Obi and Obi sweating because he still got that tie on from yesterday. Funky as hell. No deodorant. It say 20. It say 20 to 4 to 48 hours protection. No, 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 no. When you get in that interrogation room, that shit knock off 12 hours. That motherfucker protection is gone. Obi in here sweating and stanking. And then he catches a knife up the throat. All right, Peter Obi. All right, Peter Obi. I didn't think we would see him go out like I was thinking Obi was going to be a, a soldier to the end. She got, she got him right, right, right up here. Like he talking about her. Let me tell you something. If I'm Obi, when she got Obi right here, y'all going to be mad at what I said, but fuck it. We got to get into character. No, man, he's lying. I don't know what he's talking You funky bitch. 
You just a to harder. You just a to harder kids over me. Then why would you do this no more? I like, oh shit. There's a lot of blood. You just drew over me. I told you, the green card was legitimate. Man, this nigga ain't even put up a fight. <laughs> Fuck that. I'd have been punched. <laughs> I'd have been trying to punch no more. I'd have been kicking or something. This nigga. With my last breath, I would have said, Drew, you a bitch. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> you, dude. Man, this nigga didn't do nothing. This nigga ain't do nothing. I would have been in there, man. As soon as I would have seen Noma try to get that little stab in, I was like, hey, man, what the fuck? I just told you I was in ice for 24 hours, man. You ain't you gonna believe Drew over me. I would have said Drew tried to set up his mama. You gonna believe Drew? He tried to set up Monet. At this point, you gotta tell everything. Drew tried to set up Monet. What you doing this to me for? What I do? I've been loyal. Damn, man. Drew them backdoor to Obi, man. That part. Damn. Yeah, well, that's Obi's story. And then he drops down and uh they tell him to clean him up. Clean him up. 